Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today. And along with um, Ms. Boucher, it's a pleasure to be back at a JEC hearing. Um, as we talk about the shared goals of reducing uncertainty and increasing confidence, it's important to recognize that we can help Americans who are suffering economic hardships without delaying the recovery or further driving America towards fiscal collapse, potentially then leaving us unable to respond to the next crisis. One size fits all government inventions come with trade-offs, especially in light of our $26 trillion debt. So it may seem amid high unemployment, struggling businesses and general uncertainty that government programs could help, but that's often when considering only what people can get and not what they have to give up. So even some of our most basic programs are not without consequence. Food stamps reduce hunger, but they restrict what items families can buy and where they can buy them. Workers often wait a year to receive disability insurance benefits and another two to receive Medicare. Some workers are still waiting to receive the unemployment benefits from the CARES Act, and some businesses have thrown up their hands in confusion and frustration and returned PPP loans. You know, automatic adjustments are logical, but they can't always account for individual circumstances. When friends of mine suffered an income loss, their food stamps automatically increased from $700 to almost $1,000 per month. But they didn't need more food. They needed a home and a second job. When the government decides who receives what, when they receive it, and how much they receive, people have less control over their circumstances. People save less if they believe that government programs will provide for them. And they have less to spend if the government takes more in taxes to finance those programs. And already, Americans pay more in taxes than they do on food, housing, and clothing combined. It may seem like everyone would end up equally well off, paying taxes in and getting benefits out, but government programs aren't like saving accounts that households can access when they want based on what's best for them. The recent stimulus checks and increased unemployment benefits weren't helpful to the worker who had an empty bank account and lost his, year, his job when his car broke down last year. And Social Security seems like a sham to someone like my colleague who died last week at age 62 and can't pass on the hundreds of thousands of dollars he paid into the system to support his wife and his children who will soon be starting college. So it's just really hard for one size fits all programs to meet the needs of 129 million very different households. I do think that those government programs can provide short term band aids, but lasting security and prosperity comes from households having options instead of feeling trapped. People need opportunities to earn a living. They need to achieve rising incomes and to be able to save for their future needs and desires. And responsible budgeting and planning ahead are key, but the federal government sets a terrible example here. We're told that we should have three to six months worth of expenses set aside for a rainy day. And yet, despite nearly a decade of economic growth, the federal government had zero savings and instead 62 months worth of debt going into COVID-19. We're very fortunate that we've been able to borrow to combat the pandemic, but there's a fast approaching limit to our seemingly inconsequential debt. And the danger is that we don't know the limit. Fiscal crises are often sudden and severe, leaving no room for a gradual retreat. So as calls for more aggressive federal programs intensify, Congress should instead work towards a stronger economic recovery by first replacing the $600 unemployment benefit with one that better aligns to workers' previous earnings to help unemployed workers without delaying the recovery. Second is opening doors to work. With limited jobs available, people need options, and that could include non-traditional work such as freelancing. Last year, 76% of people said that they would consider freelancing if there were a recession. And 46% of people who do freelance say it's their only option because of their own health condition or family situation. Policymakers should also support workplace flexibility. The Working Families Flexibility Act would allow low-wage workers to accumulate paid time off. Enrolling back the overtime threshold would provide more stable incomes and more remote work options for lower income workers. And finally, policymakers should enact universal savings accounts so that everyone can save in a single, simple, and flexible account for any purpose and without penalties. These accounts have been particularly helpful to lower and moderate income households in Canada and the UK. Most households would prefer to have a savings account available when they need it to spend on what they want than to have the government specify what they can get and when they can get it. Thank you, and I look forward to your questions.